Um, we have a Beatles fan with us today. So all you Beatles fans out there, please stay tuned to our program tonight because we're going to tell you some things that you've never heard before about the Beatles. We're going to have some exciting guests on our program later that will be talking about the Beatles too. We're going to have the Beatles promoter, uh, Pete Bennett, with us. He'll be here in June. So stay tuned. Last night and early in the morning, last night, all the night through, last night and early in the morning, I dreamed I made love to you. Last night, while we Hi, welcome to Let's Get Personal. I'm your host, Eva Joyce. We have an exciting guest in our program today. Her name is Lucy Hart. I met her the other day in the park, and we had such wonderful things to share with each other. She was with a lot of other people in the park that love the Beatles, and I'm sure you fans out there love the Beatles too. Lucy, it is so wonderful having you today on our program. Thank you, Eva Joyce. I must say it's a pleasure to be here oh. and to be a part of your first show. It's been so great. This is our first program today, and we're just so excited to have you. And all the stuff that I learned about the Beatles the other day, I thought I knew it all. Well, I didn't know anything <laughs> compared to what you guys know. You were in the park with a lot of different people the other day, weren't you? We're members of the Nashville um, Beatles Meetup Group. Mm -hmm. And we're all fans of the Beatles, and we meet once a month at different places. And we just talk about them and their music, um, their lives growing up or as adults, and after they became famous and brought Beatlemania to the United States. And we talk about their albums and their songs and the stories behind their songs. And I have learned so much just from a short period of time. I moved to Nashville three years ago, and the Beatles meetup group was the first group of people that I met. Aww. And they've turned out to be the best friends that anyone could ever ask for. So God has really blessed me by strategically placing these wonderful people in my life. And I know that this is home now, and I know this is where I'm supposed to be. So they have several groups, different places, and different in the, all over the United States or in England? Yes, there, there are Beatles meetup groups all over the country, mm -hmm. yes. Even in England and different uh, countries of Europe? And as everywhere? far as I know, yes. Yeah. Um, I do believe, if I recall correctly, um, the Beatles were less popular in Liverpool than Led Zeppelin was oh, at really? the time. Okay. Yes, but um, that's just hearsay. I don't know that it's yeah. actual fact, but um, that's what I have heard. Yeah. Okay. I know Paul McCartney's got a school there now, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. uh, the Liverpool um, Art Institute. And if you're fortunate enough to go there, when you graduate, he presents you your diploma. What kind of school is it? A school of the arts, the fine arts, oh, the music. Learn music, yes, and stuff like that. yes. So it's accredited. Yes, definitely. Great. I couldn't believe the stuff that you guys were talking about the other day. The one thing that really got to me was you had this Beatles album, and they were telling every person that was on that album, every person that stood by and was watching them on that album. I couldn't believe mm -hmm. it. There was a woman that was just walking by. They knew her name. They knew everything about her. They knew the man next to her. They knew if he lived or he died. They said, oh, he died a couple of years ago or something. And I thought, how do you know a guy that was just standing on the street corner? How could you remember all that stuff? Mm -hmm. It just, I couldn't believe it. They even knew his underwear, what color he wore, what it was, you know, I couldn't believe the stuff that they knew about <laughs> Paul McCartney and Ringo, and they're still alive. Yeah. Lucy, how did you get started in the songwriting business? Well, ever since I was 11 years old, <laughs> I wanted to be a rock star. And I took guitar lessons one summer for one month and learned three chords. Oh. And it got too complicated after that and said I couldn't do it. So I put the guitar down 
and continued with high school graduation, college, marriage, children, and put it on the back burner. But I always loved music and listened to all different types of music, all different genres. And um, God made it possible for me to leave Mississippi and to come to Nashville, where I now call home. And he proved to me that I could do what I've been wanting to do since I was eight years old, mm -hmm. which was play music and perform in front of people. Mm -hmm. And I've pretty much taught myself, other than that one summer of guitar lessons back in the seventh grade, and I love music, I have a passion for it, and I've not been vocally trained or anything like that, but it's just, it's in me. And there's so much inside of me wanting to come out and I've been allowed that privilege by being up here in Nashville. I've gotten so much support from fellow songwriters. Mm. And I came up here with three goals. The first one was that I wanted to record just one song. And the second goal was that one person would come up to me and tell me that one of my songs meant something to them. Mm. And the third goal was that someone of notoriety here in Nashville would want to record one of my songs. And all three of those all things three. came true for me within mm. three years. It's so precious. You know, for our viewers out there, I think that they need to hear this because there's so many of them that do come to Nashville and have dreams inside of them that haven't been birthed. They have so many hopes and dreams, and they know the greatness that's within them that needs to come out, but they need to have someone's approval on it. And you don't really need anyone else's approval. You have God's approval. God birthed those things inside of your heart, inside of your spirit, and they will come out. The Bible says that he that begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He that done a good work in you will perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. Just like you, your hopes and your dreams. You've only been in Nashville for three years. I know people that's been here their whole life and, and haven't done what you've done. You know, but it, there's an encouragement that is here. I couldn't believe some of the songs I wrote. When I met Chrissy, something was birthed in me. And sometimes when you meet that special person in your life, when there's someone that you meet that's so special in your life, and that thing is just birthed in you. And overnight, something can happen. And light that flame to become a fire in your life. Just to get you started and set you aflame to everyone else. Like the American Idol show. Look at those mm -hmm. young people that are on the American Idol show that no one even knew their name before. But they knew inside their heart they had something special to give. And they just wanted to give it out. Just like the ball players, they're just wanting to give what they have. Exactly. You know, and practice makes perfect. So don't give up on your hopes and your dreams. God's still working on you, and it's going to come through. It may not be just like we want it to, but God's got a timing and a purpose in your life to fulfill those dreams because God himself put those dreams inside of you to cause them to come to pass. You don't have to cause them to come to pass. God's going to send that special person in your life to make those dreams and visions come to light like he did Lucy here. I mean, it's so wonderful what you've done. And um, God has blessed you, and you're going to be singing on our program. I just can't wait to hear your new song that you've got. And God delivered you from such a place to bring you into such a place as this. Yes, My goodness. I mean, and now and you do all kinds of things. There's so many things. What else do you do with your life? I uh, do photography. Gosh. I enjoy scuba diving as a hobby scuba and hot diving. air ballooning. Hot air balloon. <laughs> oh my God, aren't you afraid? Don't you get scared? Oh no, not at all. It's the closest thing to being to in heaven, I believe. Oh, that it's is so just neat. So quiet. I've always wanted to do that. And you're with the wind, so there's no wind blowing on you. Oh, that and is so And it's so neat. quiet and peaceful. It's Gosh. just, a, a, everybody should do it at least once. Oh. Even if you're afraid of heights, I can't, you don't feel it. I can't believe all the stuff that you've told me <laughs> that you do. I can't believe it's like, you're so young. I don't know how oh. you've done all these things. I can, <laughs> but uh, 
we just had such an exciting time on that God loves them. There's somebody out there that loves you. God loves you. God's going to send the right person in your life to help you fulfill those dreams and visions. So the world will see just how much that God really loves them. And that's my purpose in life, is to just show people the love of Christ, to show them how much God loves them and how much He yearns to give them the desires of their heart, because God puts those desires in us. Oh, yes, He does. Just to show the world that He loves you, that He's placed this in you, so that the world could see Him. Isn't that wonderful? It's amazing. Oh, I just can't wait to hear your music. And to hear everything else you've got to tell me. We're going to have to do another show with you. Will you be on another show? I'd be delighted. Oh, Thank gosh. you. But that's how you are when you're in love. Just like when you're in love with the Beatles, you want to know every little thing, every inside thing, every outside thing about them. Right. And you do. I can't believe that. Are you married? No, I'm divorced. You're divorced? Yes, and I have two beautiful daughters. Two? Grown and on their own. Oh, and that's beautiful. They're just uh, such a, a She's support group. She's single out there, guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're an amazing support group, and they're oh. just wonderful. They've turned into mature, beautiful women. And it's so funny because all the time when they were growing up, I thought I was teaching them. They were teaching me. Yes. And God blessed me with them, and I'm so mm. thankful for them every day. Oh, that's so wonderful. I have two sons of my own. Uh -huh. Stum, mm -hmm. it just, uh, I couldn't believe it. They even knew his underwear, what color he wore, what it was, you know, I couldn't believe the stuff that they knew about <laughs> Paul McCartney and Ringo, and they're still alive. Yes. Um, Paul's still alive. Um, my friend Pete Bennett has been their promoter for a long time. Oh, how interesting. Yeah, he promoted the Beatles, he promoted Elvis, he promoted the Rolling Stones. Everyone that was great, superstars, Nat King Cole, Michael Jackson. We're going to have him on our program um, on June the 23rd. So oh. I don't know what time it's going to be airing, but you will love to hear that. I'll look forward to yeah. that. Michael Jackson even showed him some moves. So I'm going to try oh, to get wow. him to move on television. Oh, that should be really. Yeah, he was a drummer that was on um, the Dick Clark show. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was real young. and. My sister and I were in love with him when he, <laughs> when he was real young, and we were real young. But um, so I grew up knowing about the Beatles. Mm -hmm. and the first time they came to America, the crazy thing was all my teachers, I couldn't believe it, but they were passing out on stage. I thought, what is this? I never see anything like this in my life. Oh. And um, it was, it was so funny. And then I started falling in love with Beatles myself. But at first I thought, what are these crazies? You know, because I was so straight. Now I'm just as crazy as they are. I was fortunate to have parents that loved the Beatles as much as I did. Oh, when they first came on the Ed Sullivan Show mm -hmm. um, in 64, my mother even commented on how much she liked their hair. And I thought, I've got the coolest parents. And so they ended up paying $5 a ticket, and they drove us seven hours to oh New Orleans, God. Louisiana, and to see them in concert. It was then Tulane Stadium. It's since been torn down and replaced with a new stadium. Oh. But um, I was about 25 feet from the stage, and I still could not hear them singing. They played for 28 minutes. Oh. And the only thing I heard the entire time was John singing the first three words to If I Fell in Love with You. Oh, the screaming so was just unbelievable. And they had mounted policemen on horses with thick ropes on either mm -hmm. side of the stage, pulling the, the crowds back. Yeah. And the girls were flipping themselves on top of people's shoulders. Oh my God. To get out of the stadium <laughs> down onto the field. So it was just total mayhem. And John even You're commented that. after that con that concert um, that he said, they don't really care to hear our music at all. They just want to see us. We could stand up here and say absolutely nothing, and it would be fine with them. Yeah, because we weren't used to people from anywhere else at that time. No. When they came over, they made such a smash. Oh, Gosh. they did. It was <coughs> just and there's still a smash. I and they were more than just a musical act. They were a cultural change, mm -hmm. and they changed music history. 
and I don't think there'll ever be another group that will come along that can do that. And their music is as popular today as it was then. Mm -hmm. I have a daughter who's graduated from college now, but she wrote three papers, two in high school and one in college, about the Beatles, mm -hmm. and she got A's on them. <laughs> and it just blew me away, and I never would have thought that so I would one day have a child that would love them and their music as much as I did. Wow. Some of the people I met with you the other day, they just astounded me. I mean, there's so many of them. Uh, some of the guys were the Wanna Beatles. Yes, they're uh, a wonderful local mm -hmm. tribute band, mm -hmm. and they do an absolute excellent job at reproducing the Beatles music as they wrote it. Uh, you do a production here in Nashville. Yes, I'm associate producer to a show, a docudrama that's going to be coming out here on public access television mm -hmm. sometime this year. Yes. And it's entitled The Lads of Liverpool. Mm -hmm. And it starts with the birth of John Lennon and it goes to the birth of Beatlemania wow. over in the UK before they came to America. Everyone knows what happens after that, but they don't know how they came to be. <coughs> And our show was written by Rob White, my executive producer, uh -huh. and he asked me to be a part of it, and I feel so privileged because he is so knowledgeable as well, and I've learned so much from him. But it's a great show, and it's going to be airing hopefully sometime this year. Oh, and I'd just so like great. to ask all of y'all to stay tuned and look out for Lads of Liverpool because it's really going to be a treat. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and our Wanna Beatles, the band you mentioned, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. are our musical guests, and they've written several songs specifically for our show. So they'll be playing at the end of each one of our episodes. I know Chrissy, my producer here, Chrissy mm -hmm. Wicks. <coughs> I've been a friend of her for, for about a year and a half now. Mm -hmm. I, she was the first person I met when I came to Nashville. And um, <coughs> I had paid for a production um, to take all these classes in this songwriters convention. I do write music. Uh -huh. And um, what I'm known for is my books. So I'm not, you know, I, I write music just to pay for my books to be out there for the children. And um, I met Chrissy about a year and a half ago. We became best of friends. And I didn't take one class. All I did was just think about her and, and just try to be around her because she was so exciting. And she was writing all these songs. And I thought, man, I better start writing some songs. <clears throat> And uh, we became best of friends, and she offered this to me. I, so I said, okay. And she's sitting over there, and I just love you, Christy, and I just want to thank you for being so kind to me and uh, being such a friend to me. Because I didn't know anybody when I came here, and now I just know everybody. <laughs> I can relate to that because I didn't know anyone know. either. It's and so Christy neat. is also a member of our Beatles meetup group, and oh. that's how I got to know her. That is so neat. So it's a, such a small world. I couldn't believe it. <clears throat> I mean, you guys knew everything. I don't, what do you guys talk about when you talk about the Beatles? I mean, everybody had albums. They had those little things that they, um, I don't know what they called them. They had the flashy kind. They had every kind of stuff. Every kind of Beatles buttons, every kind of Beatles paintings, they had everything in the world there. I couldn't believe it. And there's just little groups just huddled everywhere, just talking about the Beatles. I mean, are they our heroes or what? You know. They're my hero and always have been and always will be. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an avid Beatles fan, but a dear friend of mine, Cheryl Howe, is even more a Beatles fan than I am. She knows more than I do. Mm -hmm. And I believe she has maybe five Paul McCartney tattoos. I could be wrong about oh, that, she, so don't hold me to it. I she, did see some of her tattoos. I didn't see them all because some of them were inexposed. Right. <laughs> but I understand she's going to be a guest on your show very she soon. She will be, So yes. mm -hmm. y'all please stick around and look out for Cheryl Howe because she's going to be a real treat. Yeah, we want to show you some of her paintings and a lot of stuff she's that she did. She's quite an artist. Oh, she's yes. really great. I couldn't believe the stuff that she's done. and. She even had a, a Beatles Volkswagen covered covered with Beatles pictures and it's been noted all over England everywhere. I yeah. mean, it's been a lot of notoriety about that. Her Beatles Beatles, she called it. Oh, that is so cute. And I'm <coughs> so glad that I met you, Lucy. You're such a sweet girl and I just can't wait to hear your music. So I'm just hoping that we can get you on as quick as we can. I've got to hear that song. 
Uh, the name of my song is Mississippi Moon, and it's about my journey from Mississippi to Nashville. Oh, that's so cute. Here is Lucy Hart with Mississippi Moon. Staring out my window at a Mississippi moon We said it would last forever It ended much too soon Yesterday's and lost tomorrows Have left me wanting more shouldn't have to beg or borrow for love Mississippi moon is shining shining down on me you left me there waiting beneath that old oak tree I'm leaving in town tomorrow for Nashville, Tennessee, and the Mississippi moon will shine on without me. Packed up all the memories and dusted off my shoes and danced and sang my soul free with nothing left to lose I lifted up a melody to the lyrics of my song and the Mississippi moon bid me farewell on highway 61 Mississippi moon is shining, shining down on me As I stand aside my silhouette beneath that old oak tree I'm leaving town tomorrow for Nashville, Tennessee and the Mississippi moon will shine on without me. Mississippi moon will shine on without me and that Mississippi moon will shine on without me That makes me cry. Oh gosh. Thank you, Lucy, for being on our program. That was so sweet. That Thank was so sweet. Thank you so much for having me and for allowing me to share my song. And I know our audience just loved it. That is so precious, and I'm so thankful you were here. Thank you so much. We that love you. Fine. Thank you for joining us and getting up close and personal. We just thank you so much, and please be sure to join us next week on our next program. We're going to have some exciting guests on every program, and I know you won't want to miss it. Thank you. We love you. Last night and early in the morning, I dreamed I made love to you. Last night, while we were dancing.